guys, thanks for tuning in. So today we're going to be reviewing the new SJ Cam SJ5000X action cam. Now this is kind of a GoPro replica camera at a lower cost. And this was a review model from GearBest.com. And I will have the links down in the description of where you can pick this up. So check that out if you're interested. But what we're going to do today is uh, we're going to basically unbox this, show what comes in the box with it. Also go through the setup options um, connected to a cell phone, show you all the all of the controls. And then get some footage of this thing in action. I'm gonna do some underwater footage, some footage uh, with it attached to a drone, a quadcopter, and also like a hat cam point of view as well. And so we're gonna go through all different kinds of environments, all different kinds of uses for this and see how it performs. So this one does, right on the box here, we can see that it does include um, a built-in anti-shake gyro. That's kind of the new thing with these, is it comes with this gyro that helps helps prevent it from shaking so much. This is all the stuff we get in the box here. We get a bunch of uh, peripherals, goes through all the specs. Um, this one does have a 12 megapixel Sony sensor in it, so it should be pretty good. Sony's got really good... Um, sensors for cameras. The cool thing about this one is it does 4K recording. So you can record uh, 4K at 24 frames per second if you wanted that 4K uh, option. Anyway, let's take it out of the box real quick and then we'll go over some more stuff about it. So it just slides off here. This will just slide off. So first thing, here's the camera itself. So a nice looking case. Uh, this case is supposed to go 90 feet, so around 90 feet for underwater diving in this case. Should stay waterproof. And then unlatching the case, we're just basically pushing this arrow to the right while we pull up here. And that'll unlatch the waterproof case. All right, so here's the camera. We can see that they have some film on the lens here as well as the LCD display it has some film on it as well. This looks like our record start and stop on the top here. This looks like our power and our mode button here. This also has a Wi-Fi on it so you can connect your cell phone. And on the bottom here, we can see the battery tray. Open this little door. It looks like you could lose this, so you're gonna to wanna to be careful um, not losing that battery door. Then the battery is a 3.7 volt 900 mAh lithium ion battery. On the right hand side here, it looks like we have the Wi Fi button, and then this would be the menu selection keys up and down. And then on the left hand side here, we have a micro USB. We have a uh, mini HDMI port, and then we have our slot for our SD card. And then it looks like on this one, the microphone would be right about here. All right, so that's taking off the film there and then taking off the film on the front. All right, so there's the camera and the case. Let's see what else is in the box. Okay, so we got our USB, micro USB plug for charging and file transfer. We got some 3M tape here. We got some straps, looks like straps for a helmet. Then we have a couple of different types of flat mounts. Then we have kind of a sweeped back mount. And it looks like we have a handlebar clamp mount. Another type of clamp mount. And this is kind of a tripod-ish kind of mount. Then we kind of have a clip-in tripod mount to kind of clip it in without the case here. Looks like that's a good option. I haven't seen cameras include this yet. So that's a great 
mount too. Then we have some odds and ends, just some more kind of clip angled mounts, GoPro style for any kind of direction you want to mount it in. And then it looks like they give us another rear door for the case, for the waterproof case. Um, not sure why they look almost the same, but this one has um, the foam in the corners instead of running all the way up the side. And we have a lens cleaning cloth here. Looks like we have a lens cap. Well, that's cool. I'll give you a little silicone lens cap. So just in case you wanted to protect your lens, this thing kind of goes on nice and snug here. So that's a good, a good addition to protect the lens when you're not using it. We've got a couple of stickers and the instruction manual. It's a nice, a nice thick instruction manual. It looks like it's got um, some nice color photos and uh, all the instructions on how to operate it and put everything together. Okay, so that's it for the stuff in the box. Now let's go over the features on the camera and try to connect it to a cell phone and see how it does. Okay, and then uh, initially right off the bat, what I recommend doing is you definitely want to charge the camera before you start plant messing with it and using it. So they provide this uh, micro USB cable. So go ahead and just plug that micro USB cable in. And uh, when we plug this in, kind of interesting, we get a, a boot up, kind of like a cell phone. And then we get this um, charge indicator on the back of the screen here, um, letting us know it's charging. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is set this thing up on the App Store and download the SJ Cam app and get it all connected. So in our um, App Store, if you have an Android or iPhone, just type in SJ and you should see the SJ Cam come up. I went ahead and just download, uh, downloaded the first one on top here. So just go ahead and click on that, install it, and then once it's installed, we're ready to connect. So we're going to turn on our SJ Cam by pushing and holding in the power button here until it turns on. So you can operate it while it's uh, charging. So I'm just going to have it kind of charging here while I'm showing you guys how to do this. So basically, um, the SJ Cam is pretty awesome. It has a bunch of different options. Uh, first of all, let's just go ahead and connect to the, uh, the application. So basically, just opening up the SJ Cam application. And what you want to do is you want to make sure your Wi-Fi is on and that SJ Cam app is installed. And uh, then all you're going to do is go ahead and go down to your Wi-Fi options here. Turn on the SJ Cam Wi-Fi by pressing this uh, little Wi-Fi button on the side. You're going to see this Wi-Fi picture come up. And then we can see that this uh, SJ5000X has popped up in the Wi-Fi on the cell phone. So I'm just going to click on that. And so it seems like we should be connected now. On my phone, you get this pop-up here that it says there's no internet access. If you do have uh, the Marshmallow OS for Android, it looks like you're going to have to do one more step and just approve that to stay connected. There we go. Now I'm going to open up the SJ Cam app after we're connected to the camera with the Wi-Fi. And then you get this screen here, and all you can do is press connect to your camera right there. And we can see that we have a um, real-time view of the camera here with Wi-Fi. But anyway, once we're connected, we can see that we have kind of a real-time view of what the camera's looking at. And we can see that the there's a little bit of lag, not too much. Of course, it's going to depend on how close you are to the device. So as we can see, we have the option there to connect live. And then there's a bunch of settings um, that you can set in your phone if you want to, but I'm just going to go into the camera settings straight from the camera and show you everything you can do. Then you're just going to go ahead and press in this front power button here, one click, and that'll get you into the menu. So just a quick click. Uh, so the first click is going to get you into photo mode, and the second click is going to get you into the menu mode. Now this thing has a pretty intense menu on this, this camera, and it's pretty neat. So you have these two up and down menu buttons here on the side. And so you can go kind of back and forth 
um, and scroll through the menu. So just going to kind of go through the menu settings real quick if, with you to show you what it has. Um, so as we scroll through and it kind of highlights, you can see it highlighting each menu option there. Then we have over here, we have TV out. And the way you can uh, go ahead and choose the menu is just by pressing, if you highlight the, the item, you just press the top record button here. And you can see it goes into a sub menu. So here we have the selection for TV out on off. So for example, say you wanted to do a um, like FPV or something or connect it to your television. You can go ahead and turn that on or off. And then just the top button will select the menu item. Coming down, video lapse. We have time lapse, of course, on the, um, the photo portion of it for the camera. And then we have playback. I don't have a card in it right now, but basically um, that's where you can just play back your videos and pictures straight on the device, which is pretty cool, or on your television if you have it connected uh, to a TV. And then over here is in the setup. So this is pretty cool. This is a pretty extensive menu in the setup of the SJ5000X. And what's cool about this is you've got the screen so you can go through all of these options without connecting it to any device. So we can change our resolution, we can see how much different types of resolution we have. We have up to 4K, 24 frames per second, and then all the way down to regular VGA, 240 frames per second, and all everything in between. So, pretty good selection of um, of stuff. And then we have cyclic record. So basically, you're choosing how long you want the clips to be on your video. So if you're worried about maybe some, some corruption or something, uh, I have mine set to 10 minute clips. Just in case something happens when it's recording, it will have recorded a 10 minute clip and then started a new clip. If you do have it off, it's just going to record one, record one continuous clip. So you know, if anything goes wrong and the, the file is corrupted on that one clip, then you might lose your whole video. So I go ahead and just have it at 10 minutes. And it just makes the several videos, but you can always combine them into one. Then we have the field of view. So this is going to be really useful when you're doing, especially when you're mounting this thing onto like quadcopters and stuff, and you don't want to see the feet in the view. You can basically go ahead and choose your field of view all the way down to 70, which is going to give it a more of a narrow field of view so you can um, prevent the legs from being in your video or whatever. And then you're just going to choose whichever one uh, suit you for that specific application. Then we have our WDR. Uh, this would be better for like in low light or um, areas where there's a lot of shadows and stuff. I'm not really too sure on this one. Uh, I've tried a different, a few different settings on this uh, with different cameras with uh, WDR on and off and I couldn't really tell the difference so I guess we'll find out when we do the, um, the actual video test on this one how it all does. And I will have that video coming up pretty soon. Anyway next thing down is a gyro sensor. This one has a feature where it's supposed to have a gyro inside of it. Let's turn that on. That basically I think it uses a little bit more power but it's basically just a little bit of little um, gyroscope inside that dampens the lens a little bit so that the image is a little more stable in small shakes. So we'll test that as well. And this one, this one's pretty cool. This is a motion detection uh, start and stop. So you could either do picture or video with this. And what this is, is you basically turn it on. When you turn it on and you have your thing recording, your camera recording, you could set it down or mount it somewhere. And when there is uh, it senses, it must have some kind of um, IR sensor or something on the front, but when it senses movement in front of it, it will start recording or taking pictures. So that's a cool option too if you ever wanted to use this as say like a, a surveillance camera or something, or even just uh, whatever, time-lapse camera, um, and you wanted to detect movement, say animals, people, whatever you wanted to do. That's kind of neat. I've never seen this option in a camera before like this. And so that's that's very cool. So we'll be testing all these features out uh, in the field on a quadcopter, um, on a hat cam, and all that stuff. And then so to get back out, you just press the um, the power button again that gets us back out to the menu. 
gets us back to the menu and then on the video power button again that gets us back to our our filming here so when we are back to the main screen we can see we have um, our battery meter here our mic is on so that means that it's, it's going to record the sound coming in over here we have our clip time so we basically have a 10 minute clip set here we have our resolution it's set at and then this is just the recording countdown here it's showing us we have the wide dynamic range uh, selection on and it's showing we also have that gyro steady on here it's a flashing hand here and then it has your field of view it's showing you what field of view you have set right now I have set 110 it's showing you the time it's been on here and then it's showing you the date so a lot of cool options on this camera and what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this thing through the paces we're gonna go ahead and um, connect it to a few quadcopters get some footage in the air of how this thing's performing uh, we're also going to put it on a hat cam as I said before and see how it does uh, with the gyro steady on and off and then I'm also gonna actually take this thing in the water since it does have this waterproof case since it does have this waterproof case with uh, all these different peripherals that it comes with I'm gonna go ahead and put this thing through the paces through its paces underwater too. maybe do some spear fishing with it or just underwater diving at the beach you know check it out and see how this thing performs and see how it performs underwater as well so anyway guys uh, I hope this initial part of the review for the SJ cam 5000 X elite was informative for you and uh, stay tuned for a few more videos on this thing I'm definitely gonna do quite a bit of filming with this um, in the air in the water and on land so definitely stay tuned for for all of those videos to see just how it performs and don't forget the links are down there in the description if you do decide you want to pick this up go ahead and check that out from those links there go ahead and check out my channel I do a lot of uh, videos like this reviews um, flight tests modifications all kinds of stuff with RC and tech so go ahead and check that out I think you'll like it but anyway till the next video thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one mm -hmm.